I will first uh, share with you a domestic case concerning Italy and its cooperation with Libya, and then focus most of my presentation on potential responsibility of Italy before the European Court of Human Rights. So the Italian Association for Juridical Studies on Migration, ASG, has recently brought legal proceedings before the Regional Administrative Tribunal with regard to the annulment of a decree implementing a memorandum of understanding by which the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs allocates the 2.5 million euros to the Ministry of the Interior to repair four vessels for Libyan authorities and also organize a training course for Libyan officials to be held both in Italy and Tunisia. Such a disbursement is part of a big, bigger fund of 200 million euros, so-called African Fund, which was set up by the Italian Parliament to promote cooperation and dialogue with African countries, which are considered a priority for migratory routes. Being Libya a notoriously unsafe country for migrants and refugees in transit, so the compatibility of uh, such a massive allocation of money with the stated goals of the African Fund has been put into question by the two uh, Asi lawyers bringing the case to court. Given that these vessels might be used by the Libyan Coast Guard and, out, and the authorities in Libya to pull back migrants and refugees either rescued or intercepted at sea and retain them in appalling detention centers as testified by the UN High Commissioners for Human Rights and several international organizations. Uh, the main argument before the administrative tribunal is that uh, the equipment supplied by Italy can be used for military purposes and for retaining migrants and refugees in a condition of inhuman and degrading treatment. And this would be a diversion of the funding allocated by the Italian Parliament through the African Fund, which should be rather aimed to enhance the dia dialogue and cooperation with African countries and to contribute to the resolution of the humanitarian crisis in Libya. But putting uh, aside the uh, domestic case, uh, the core of today's presentation, as I said, will be on uh, potential profiles of responsibility of Italy before the European Court of Human Rights. And uh, uh, this is an open uh, uh, question. It's a very debated issue within several groups of scholars and, uh, and practitioners. As it seems that in uh, particular cases in which uh, uh, the pullbacks of migrants and refugees uh, has been delegated to Libyan authorities, uh, an individual complaint before the European Court of Human Rights would still be possible to affirm the responsibility of Italy. By transferring the management of uh, foreigners to third countries, the strategy launched by the European Union in 2016 with the EU Migration Partnership Framework aims to eliminate, as you know, the, any physical contacts uh, between either direct or indirect uh, between the refugees and uh, the authorities of the would-be destination states. Examples of this externalized containment are the eu turkey deal to halt the flow of migrants to Greece, but also the EU-Italy-Libya cooperation at, at maritime and land borders through pullbacks and preventive rescue at sea. And as you can notice, the focus is now on forestalling exit, preventing exit. And the goal is to conclusively severe any jurisdictional link uh, be, with the European Union countries uh, in the attempt to escape any related responsibility. So my question is whether in these circumstances of contactless control, a definition that uh, we have uh, worked out with Violetta in a paper just co-authored, um, whether uh, the jurisdiction of European states and therefore potential responsibility can be engaged. So whether, for example, a case could be brought before the European Court of Human Rights for violation of the principle of non-refoulement or the right to leave. And my argument is that uh, uh, European states remain accountable uh, for their support to Libya in uh, their action of uh, containment of migratory flows. The political support plus the technical uh, funding, the technical support, the uh, training, the keeping also by uh, military tools uh, dispensed under this EU 
Italy-Libya cooperation and a set of arrangements which are explicitly conditioned on Libya capacity to manage migratory flows and impede exit for transit towards Europe can be said to constitute a form of decisive influence, a definition that we find um, that the, actually the European Court of Human Rights uses in uh, very different cases, uh, such as Ilascu and Katan, uh, concerning Moldova and Russia. In those cases, for example, in finding the responsibility of the Russian Federation, it was of little consequence for the European Court of Human Rights that the agents of the respondent states had not taken part uh, directly in the actions uh, complained of in the applications. According to the, to the court, Russia was responsible because it not only made no attempt to put an end to the violation, but it also did not take any measure measures to prevent uh, uh, such infringements of the convention. <coughs> so while the, inf the influence exercised by EU member states, uh, in primis Italy, clearly falls uh, short of military presence, okay, or um, it is nonetheless decisive enough to determine the course of event to the extent that without such a massive contribution and massive support, Libya, as all other transit countries, would have never stopped migrants in transit in their way to, to Europe or to the European uh, Union advantage, as was precisely the case in the past. This is not convenient for uh, uh, states, for transit states, and it's also a very unpopular measure along, uh, among local people. It is also important to stress that the Italian government has so far uh, engaged a lot in rescuing uh, uh, in the Mediterranean, in saving lives at sea, and nevertheless, in the last uh, couple of years, uh, uh, Libya has received uh, millions uh, and, uh, of euros uh, plus a technical, logistical uh, support and a training program for the Coast Guard. Italy has signed uh, uh, agreements uh, not only with the UN-based government, uh, but also with General Haftar uh, for the provisions of uh, um, vehicles and military devices to patrol land and southern border. As a consequence of this plethora of arrangements, um, the number of uh, uh, arrivals uh, in, in Europe and in Italy in particular dropped dramatically since uh, last summer. And there is also a knowledge element which is very important. Uh, as the, court, the European Court of Human Rights argued in the ERC case, Italy should have known what is the treatment of migrants and refugees in Libya before entering into agreement with this country. So such a decisive influence might constitute a form of indirect but nonetheless effective control that amounts to jurisdiction under Article 1 of the European Convention of Human Rights, thus triggering potential responsibility of member states in case of violation of the convention. However, an easier case would also be uh, in those circumstances in which there is a, a clear operative engagement by uh, Italian authorities. Uh, um, so, for example, uh, several times uh, you know that NGOs have denounced uh, um, uh, the collaboration of Italy in the localization of uh, migrants' uh, boats and in the facilitation of return. Uh, on migrants to Libya. Amnesty International in its recent report has made a recollection of all these uh, uh, situations. Uh, just to give you an, ex an example, on 27 uh, uh, September last year, a journalist shot a video on uh, a boat, on board the boat of the Libyan uh, Coast Guard. And in this video, we see the captain of the Libyan uh, uh, vessel saying that uh, he received a call from uh, uh, an Italian warship and uh, a distress informing, uh, so they, he was informed by Italians that there was a distress call and was provided with the position of the migrants' boats. So when Libyans reached the location so the, the, of the boats, the migrants' warships had already been there for a few hours um, and already providing migrants with life vests. Uh, the Italian Navy did not start the rescue operation but just called the Libyans and prevented the migrants' boat from continuing the journey, also encouraging them through a keep-away banner. 
And the video ends with the migrants that were on board the Libyan vessels and brought back to the country of the parts, or so not to a safe place in Italy. To conclude, uh, the case shows how Italy might uh, uh, potentially found responsible for human rights violations committed in Libya on migrants that either intercepted or rescued at sea and then pulled back in the on Libyan territory by Libyans themselves. Uh, Italy jurisdiction can indeed be considered engaged as long as uh, uh, he has uh, he exercised de facto effective control over migrants at sea who are prevented uh, to from continuing their journey. Moreover, calling the Libyan Coast Guard to send the boat localization, keeping migrants in custody even without the physical contact, and ending over control of the situation to Libyans rather than rescuing migrants at sea also involve an operative engagement uh, by Italian authorities, which goes beyond the notion of uh, uh, decisive influence that I mentioned before, uh, which is due to the massive technical, logistical, operative, economic uh, uh, support to Libyan authorities to stem migratory flows to Europe. Thank you very much for your 